there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free, personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. So it's going to be really hard to argue that the premium brand of speakers in Focal isn't one of the most adored, most loved brands in all of car audio. It's it's obvious. There's many a dealer have come on the show and have talked about them and raved about everything they do and how they sound and all that great stuff. Well, when I heard that there are new products coming out from the Focal camp, well, there's no question I have to give my friend Justin Bond a call at BB Distribution and come in and talk to us about all the new technologies and products that Focal has to offer for 2022. This is CMA Showcase presented by Sirius XM, Focal, and it starts now. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this CMA showcase where we're featuring Focal with the new product to present today. I'm your host, Ben Wu, and uh, I'm not going to do this alone. I mean, Focal obviously is a brand that's very adored, loved, some really rich products with rich technology that deliver time and time again. It's become a fan favorite for enthusiasts and installers alike. Well, here to tell us a little bit more about some new product, and we're going to get real deep into this, uh, some new cone technology, in fact, from what I hear, we're going to invite Justin Bond, the product trainer for BB Distribution, the exclusive distributor for Focal in Canada, to the studio. Mr. Bond. Hey, how you doing, Ben? I'm pretty excited because, uh, well, um, not only is, is Focal a fan favorite and an enthusiast favorite, well, it's a kind of a favorite of mine too. Uh, always has been for, for many, many years. Focal's always been on the cutting edge uh, of performance, uh, of high fidelity, if you will. And uh, when I heard or when you put in my ear that, Ben, I think we're going to book a show because we got some new stuff to talk about, I got pretty excited. So thank you for coming today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it is a, a super exciting show. Uh, I mean, for me, I mean, our our industry in the last two years has has changed drastically, especially with COVID and the way things were, and you know, continuously dealing with production issues. Um, for us, not so much production, but more as in uh, securing raw materials for the goods that we manufacture um, has been a huge issue for us. So, for us to kind of come out of the gate and to release. Um, a brand new speaker line as well as a revamped speaker line in our lines is pretty impressive for us. And I'm really proud that we're, we're able to do it. Well, I'll tell you from what I've learned from our previous trainings, especially when we're talking about flax technology, for example, this is not something that just happens overnight, you know, tons of research, tons of resources and development and scientists and all this stuff go into figuring all this stuff out. So when you're talking about a brand new line, I know that that comes along with a ton of effort before we can even get to talking about it today. So um, Justin, we've got a video that kind of sets the mood for us so we can get into presentation mode and really dive into what we're talking about today. But I wanted the folks at home to know, you know, at what level Focal kind of operates at and give them a glimpse of what Focal HQ is all about. What do you say? Yeah, roll the tape. And that's a great way to start because I want to remind the guys that are tuning in, if you haven't heard of Focal, it's a brand from France. They've been in the audio game a long time. They do high fidelity home audio. They've gone into earphones, headphones. Um, 
and they've actually have a, a partnership with Name, which is another high-end company. And of course, they're in car audio. So I'll give you the opportunity to kind of give everybody just a quick debriefing if they haven't heard of Focal as of right now. Yeah, so uh, Focal is a France-based company. Uh, it's located in Saint-Étienne in kind of the southern, eastern part of France, about an hour away from Lyon. Uh, it's, it was founded in 1979. So, I mean, when it comes to skin in the game and making speakers, these guys have it for sure. Um, the one thing that I do love to tell people is don't think of Focal so much as, I'm sure you've heard me say it before, as a speaker company because it's more like a technology company. Um, the number, numerous amounts of patents and engineering that goes into all the products that they produce is what really separates them uh, from a lot. You know, they have a, a very strong core ideology on, on the requirements of a speaker and what a speaker, mainly the cone or, or the materials must do. Um, you know, that speaker being light, that speaker being well damped, and that speaker being extremely rigid or strong. Um, those are the three kind of facets or criteria that all their speakers, when they're measuring up or, or producing, that's what they're looking for. Um, because they found for, you know, their, their special sauce or their secret recipe has kind of you know, yield some of the best speakers in the world. Um, and they have strict guidelines and technologies that they use to achieve that. So yeah, is there some exotic cone materials for sure? But, you know, I've said in other, you know, you know, meetings with you, when you get to a certain level, uh, if it makes that much more of a difference, well, it has to, you know, it's, you know, a, a Ferrari brake caliper is not the same as a Ford Focus brake caliper. Right. They both do the same thing. They both stop the car. Right. But one does it much more reliable, much better, you know, and sexier and way sexier. <laughs> and way sexier. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, for me, it Focal is the epitome of of that engineering in a game that a lot of people don't really think about engineering or, or what goes into it. You know, you've heard. People like Ken talk about, you know, a, a speaker is effectively a paper plate, a tube and a magnet. And he's right. But it's the intricacies of what goes in between that and what that paper plate or that tube are made of that definitely kind of separates a bunch of, uh, you know, other brands. A hundred percent. And 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 just for as an overall product outline, you know, yes, many different levels of uh, full line speakers. Uh, we mm -hmm. also have subwoofers, subwoofer enclosures. We have some amplification, especially in the Harley Mo Davidson side of things. And most recently, of course, the uh, the inside series, which is uh, OE replacement. So it's not just, you know, high end speakers. There, there's a full line to it. Yeah. You know, I think that's if there's a takeaway from today's show, it's uh and, and believe it or not, Ben, like, you know, we, we have a lot of dealers in the country and we have a lot of flagship or high end dealers. You know, you saw, you know, every one of the, the top five installers, right? Every single one of them puts in this product because that means they have confidence in it. But the biggest thing I want to say to dealers is you don't have to be scared to sell the entry level uh, with Focal because you're going to know that the same DNA and the care and the quality uh, is going to come in through that whole lineup. It's pulled right through the, the brand itself. Um, so you don't have to shy away when, you know, yeah, it's not a thousand dollar pair of speakers. We can still be your option for $200, right? So the, the DNA drips down, guys. The DNA drips down. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's fast forward to today. Why do I have you here in studio? We're talking about some new product. Can you give us an overview of what we're going to discuss today? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna talk quickly about uh, a super space efficient passive subwoofer system. Uh, we're gonna talk about a redesign on our entry level speaker line, and then we're gonna talk about a brand new uh, made in France series of speakers, which is obviously what I'm obviously most excited about. Yeah. But uh, um, and and the, and the kind of ideology behind all of it, right? That's that's a big thing. Where where is you know Global HQ? Where is Focal's head at when they're making these product products and why? Um, it's uh, and how it transfers over to our market. I think is also really important. Very very important. All right, so we're gonna get all that perspective on. Um, at this time, why don't we go ahead? We, I know we have a slide. Let's dive into our very first product that you wanted to cover. It's got an interesting name to it. It's called the I-Sub-Twin. Why don't you tell us what that's all about? Yeah, so 
I sub twin. So the story behind I sub twin, and I'll be 100% honest because we're in North America. And when Focal and us talked at the beginning and, and they said, yeah, we got this. I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent on this on, on, you know, for us, big base is important. And, uh, in Europe, space is important, right? A lot of vehicles are hatchbacks, diesels, small, you know. Subcompact. Yeah, super Mm -hmm. subcompact. So they're like, Justin, trust us. So I was like, okay, cool. I mean, you guys are the experts as well. Um, So yeah, so they released iSub Twin. So this is what it is right here. This is what it looks like. All right. So it is a system of dual subwoofer so there's two of these little boxes in one package and what they are is an elliptical woofer i don't know if you can see that on there yeah, but let's it go has and an zoom aluminum in on cone here. and it has a double stacked ferrite magnet now the ideology behind this came from their actual in the home theater side of things they had something called the dimension which was a really fantastic sound bar um and it had it too had its own kind of six by nine elliptical shelf woofer that would go behind it for a sub bar, like if it was on a mantle. And that's where this came in. And what it is, is it's a super compact, you know, it's a polycarbonate enclosure and it mounts either with, you know, there's four, there's four mounting holes on the, on the unit or Velcro itself. And it's designed to go under the front seat of a vehicle. So that's why we give you two, one for the driver, one for the passenger. Um, it's not crazy power hungry. It's a hundred, hundred watt RMS each. Um, it's designed to be used with an FDS amplifier or an impulse amplifier from us. And it's going to give you that upfront, tight, uh, low frequency bass response that you're you're going to crave uh, on a vehicle with a factory system. No, it's not going to shake your mirror, but it's going to be much like a higher end upgraded Burmester or HK and a BMW where you're used to having those woofers up front. So it's a really easy way, you know, a uh, very efficient way to add bass uh, into the vehicle. So two questions. Did you say the kit comes with two subs yeah. or two boxes? Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. ISUB twin. So the reason it's ISUB twin is because there's two of them. So they're going to come with two of these little boxes here. You can't really see, but it is a, an aluminum cone with a double stat magnet. It's Focal embossed on the bottom of the container. And it's just a simple little black box. You know, uh, where's my phone here? I'll show you. So here. I mean, I'm super intrigued with the shape of that that woofer. This is the height of it, right? Okay. So that's kind of the the designation for it to slide right under uh, a seat. So we we powered them up on the bench, Mm -hmm. uh, and we were super impressed. We heard them in a car, and they do exactly what they're supposed to do. What is this intricate or unique cone shape slash size that I'm looking at there from what, what type of woofer is in this box? Yeah. So like I said, it's the cone actually on this woofer. So it's an elliptical style woofer. Um, and it's made the cone on this particular, uh, speaker or subwoofer is aluminum. Interesting. Yeah. That's unlike so, anything else in the, in the full cal line. If yeah. I'm there's not l- literally nothing. Like I said, the first time that you may have noticed this, was when we did that home, the dimension pack in the home audio. Um, yeah, so it's an aluminum kind of elliptical design. Uh, and it's, a, you know, it's long throw. It has a double sec magnet on it. Uh, and it's designed to give you as much possible output as you can within the constraints that it's in. So it's a really unique piece. It sounds awesome. It serves a purpose. And you don't have to give up any space anywhere. Uh, I mean, this is an application which actually, if you actually look at the market and you have a customer that has a really tight constraints, tight, small car, wants some premium sound, this could be it. Because really, there's not a whole lot. I've, I've seen, you know, comparatively, Justin, just to give you uh, some some insight, I've seen similar type stuff um, whereby it's a sub and it's super flat and super tight, but they're not that small. This looks really small uh, as far yeah. as size is concerned. And the fact that they give you two makes it also a unique system because everything else I've seen is only a singular driver. Um, now, however, this is a passive system, correct? Yes. So non-amplified. So like I said, it's designed to be used with mm-hmm. our impulse, which is just a 55 by four that you can bridge to this. Um, it's uh, it's fantastic. It's, uh, you know, it's it plays 50 hertz to like 150 
it's it's just for that base response that you crave that you're not going to get from a standard you know oem style system and, and if you're in that build you know compact space small vehicle and you're putting in some front end you know focal speakers or yeah. you're going to watch the match it tonally and that's not a hard sell 100 percent, right okay. it's uh I think it's when it comes to this, it's definitely about managing expectation and qualifying the customer. Right? Well, I think you need to show them. You need to have this on demo to give them like this. This if you know with the space, if you don't want to give up your trunk, ma'am, sir, I got a solution. Yeah. This is what it sounds like. And the only the thing I can like, like, recommend you know? on that is that it's in a car. In a I car, mean, exactly. Yeah, you don't want to put this in a giant showroom. Teeny tiny passive woofer boxes in a thirty thousand yeah. square foot showroom is not going to do right any justice. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's uh, let's go on to the next uh, topic here. All right, oh, yeah. Here we go. Auditor Evo. So this is cool from us. So this is, in terms, the redesign of our entry level speakers. Um, so Auditor Auditor came about a long time ago. So when it first started off, it started off as what's called a Sound Machine by Auditor. And then it was rebranded in, in 2016, uh, again, to become Auditor by Focal. And so, so from 2016 was the first redesign in the line where what they did is they decided to bring it into the actual Focal family. And from there, you know, using the same type of ideologies that they have in all their other speaker lines, they've then now moved uh, in 2022. The launch, obviously, for us is Auditor Evo. Now, this is one of the things that I said was very exciting, Ben, because for us, this came about during COVID, right? So um, I know back in France in, in HQ, they had a lot of different projects up on the docket. And uh, some of them obviously made it, some of them didn't. But this is the first thing. So this is Auditor Evo. So when it comes to this speaker, it's a very standard speaker. All right, it's a Mylar tweeter right, with a, a polycarbonate uh, cone material. Uh, but the big thing for this and us is not only was the entire line kind of rebranded and redeveloped, um, we actually added two brand new speakers. So the two speakers that we added are the ACX165 and the ASC165S. So the S on both of those is going to stand for slim. Mm. So... You know, being that this speaker is is geared towards that, just put it in, kind of, you know, you don't need aftermarket amp uh, amplification. It works with your factory head unit. It works with an aftermarket head unit. This is your entry level. This is getting your feet wet with our brand. This is, you know, uh, the the our, our mass market price point style speaker. Uh, we've now added two other speakers to the lineup to just make sure that we have almost the widest selection of offerings in Auditor Evo, uh, as well as the easiest kind of install short of going to the inside line, which is a bit of a price bump between us. Okay, so first of all, do you have any of these on hand to show? Uh, I do, so, so this zoom is- Let's in on Justin here. Yeah, this is the new Thin Woofer. So this is the Thin Component. So super sleek, super nice, Focal branded back, right? It's a cast steel basket on this one. All right. This is a regular speaker size. This is the thin. We'll just get that so it looks, you know, you can see it's significantly significant. less high. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then from that too, we've done the complete redesign. Anyone who knows Auditor, old Auditor used to have silver tweeters, kind of slightly bulky. This is just a nice, you know, the Focal Wave Guider logo in the front. You can kind of see it reflecting there. Uh, and then an all black appearance, right? So this tweeter bucket does disassemble should you need to. Um, but, you know, it's made to be extremely versatile and extremely, you know, easy to mount. Now, Auditor in general for us comes in a six by nine coax, a six and a half coax, now a six and a half coax slim, a five and a quarter and a four inch. And then uh, it came in a five and a quarter component, a six and a half component, and now a six and a half component thin, right? Oh, so, so the components that is available standard and thin. Yes, right, mm -hmm. which is nice. 
So the biggest takeaway that we have from that is that we are still investing um, in maybe our, I don't want to say lowest tier, but our least technologically advanced speaker, um, but still absolutely phenomenal sounding. Um, and it pushes right through. I think there is a slide. The next slide shows like the original auditor with the uh, the slim side by side. So that's kind of so you can get a look there of just where where the speaker's gonna go and how easy it is to install. So a couple of comments I want to make here, Justin. First of all, this is a fantastic looking entry to Focal. Uh, Correct. The branding that they've done, as you'd mentioned, you, you, I remember that it wasn't Focal branded at one point. And I think there was a, there's always a, a, a missing, you know, check mark there, I think for people that, that wanted or was interested at this price point. Uh, but now with that Focal branding, I think it adds a lot of value to it. You know, not only that, but the, the cosmetics, you know, with the tweeter, the coaxials, with the Waveguide logo, all of that represents value, right? Especially for this type of customer who, you know, want to play with maybe the, the higher end stuff, maybe not there yet from a budgetary standpoint, but still can brag to their friends, yeah, well, I got Focals in my car. And you know what? This is a great option for that. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how we establish customers for life. So when we talk about selling our speakers or when we talk about our dealers and I go out and, and I do a training or I talk about selling it, um, you know, I have, a, I have an abundance of dealers that like, they don't have price tags on their boards mm -hmm. because when it comes to the music, it's not about the price. It's about the music, right? It's about what it makes you feel, what it makes you remember, what it makes you think about excitement, emotion, right? That's what we're selling when it comes to speakers. And it always starts with us showing them the best first, um, regardless of who they are. And the reason that we do that is because everyone deserves to have that feeling. And, you know, a couple things come of that. So number one, hopefully they fall in love and sh say, sure, I'll take it, right? That's, a, that's the ideal everywhere, but not always realistic. But if they truly do care about music, well, it establishes a customer for life with the brand. Right. Because like you said, they may not financially be at Kevlar or Flax because, hey, it's a lot of money, inflation. But when they find the speaker in the level in the line, and that's what's an, another thing that's useful about us um, that they love. Uh, it it creates that aspiration that want to go further, that mm -hmm. want the right. Uh -huh. They've they've now. Set that it's, a, it's the beginning of the journey, not Correct. the end. Mm -hmm. They've set that speaker in their mind as that pinnacle to chase, mm -hmm. right? And the bar and, at which they're now launching that, you know, that chase from. Exactly, right? So mm -hmm. it, like you said, it does get them into the brand and the ability to build um, the brand confidence and the love of music and the love of Focal with them. Um, because that, nice... that pitch, Dustin, is so important that you bring that up. Sorry, I'm going to just mention something. No here. worries. That that story there is so important for dealers to be able to do on the sales room floor. You know, you're, yes, we're all selling equipment, right? It's all equipment. It's none of it that you sell does anybody need. Right? Nothing. So nope. it's totally about selling, you know, that whole story that you just described. And if this is the starting point that they can, man. Perfect. Because you have to look at it two ways. And, and as a salesperson myself in the past, was I better off selling the entry level of X brand or the highest level of the other brand? That's an interesting question because that comes up a lot, right? Are you better off selling them the highest level of brand B or the entry level of brand A? I'd like to hear what you have to say about that. Well, unfortunately, uh, I don't really concern myself with the other brands so much, but what what I know and from when I work the floor is, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. Uh, you know, as a salesperson, what speakers you like to sell, right? I hope that I'm those speakers, okay? But what you can take confidence in is, well, my best of the best and my entry all carry the same warranty. They all carry the same logo. They all carry the same style of engineering. They all carry, you know what I mean? The same DNA. So whether you're selling my speaker again, my entry level speaker against the best of another brand or the mediocre, the ability to have the confidence in the brand is there through every step. 
And the other thing with Focal too is, um, you know, sometimes it can be a bit finicky, but we have such a wide offering in our levels of speakers that we can accommodate any single price point that the customer is looking for, right? And we do that without sacrificing, uh, you know, margin or quality or, you know what I mean, or compromise. And that's, that's what we aim for is the best sound without compromise. Fair enough. Fair enough. Shall we move on to the next slide, sir? Sure. Oh, you just hit it like that. There was no intro to it. Let's just get right into it. Well, Slate I had some videos, fiber. but I got yelled at because they weren't formatted correctly. So we could kill them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell us about Slate Fiber, man. All right. What is this? So I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory on Slate Fiber and why and where it came to be. So Polyglass or the, the PC and the PS series that we currently have um, are one of the longest standing speakers in our lineup. Uh, that speaker has in some way or form that cone has been used since 1979. Um, it is a cellulose pulp cone covered in glass microbeads. So it's our gray cone. It's what you have seen make its way into the inside line uh, as well as just our performance series. Now, the original expiration of the patent from Polyglass is what forced the production of flax, right? Because obviously it can be a dangerous game when stuff becomes measured in the East, um, right? Uh, or in China, because the potential for copy or counterfeit obviously increases. And so with flax being a made in France product, counterfeiting is extremely low, just like with Kevlar and Utopia has never been counter like copied. Um, we have seen instances of replicas or counterfeit polyglass before. Really? And the easiest way for Focal as a company to control that was to bring it at home that you know to say so that's where the idea of polyglass eventually became but our sorry slave fiber so about three years ago uh in home audio uh focal home they debuted a new speaker called the chorus series now the chorus series was the first speaker from focal to feature the slate fiber cone so the slate fiber cone is a very unique cone when they when they debuted that, I was like right on the phone. I was like te texting, like, "Hey man, what's going on, guys? When's this coming to car? What's this replacing?" Blah 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 blah. And they're like, "Justin, it's not coming to car." I'm like, wah, 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 wah. But the reason it wasn't coming to car right away because in the home level, you're not just paying for a speaker, right? You're paying for a the cabinet, cabinet. The right? You're paying room. for all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us, it's a speaker, and then it's labor plus plus plus. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult for them to kind of get this speaker at the price point they wanted it to be at, right? In order to like, where do you effectively, where do you put it in our hierarchy of speakers that doesn't muddy one or demolish another, right? So it's kind of hard. So they've actually been working on slave fiber and car for almost four years now. Um, I was in the factory in October and they have a new machine there. I like to call it Johnny Five, if anyone remembers the old short circuit movies. Um, Johnny Five. So Slate Fiber uh, is a unique, a, a new way of manufacturing for us. So typically when we manufacture our cones or our made in fiber cones, they're all what we call sandwich, right? So we use uh, a center substrate, whether it's flax or uh, raw cell foam and Kevlar and U Utopia. Um, and then we sandwich that between two layers of glass fiber or a layer of glass and a layer of aramid fiber or Kevl Kevlar. And what that typically has done for us in the past is it's allowed us to increase the strength um, of, of that cone, you know, almost seven times by only adding 0.4% mass to it, mm -hmm. right? So the cone still stays really, really light, um, but it's also very strong. 
And the reason we want the cones to be light is because the faster that that cone can move, the faster that cone can vibrate back and forth, the better resolution that cone has, the higher bandwidth it can play, right? Mm -hmm. The reason we need it to be strong is because if that cone begins to twist and dis distort, you know, and, and effectively it's no longer moving linear through the spectrum of motion, well, what happens there is we obviously get distortion. It becomes right? inaccurate. So, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what we've done with Slate Fiber is we've effectively created a new manufacturing process. Uh, like I said, it took over four years to kind of get this done. Um, and we've done it using a recycled non-woven carbon fiber and encapsulated it into a plastic polymer. So it, it's, a, it's a bit of a mouthful. Right. That's a mouthful to, to, to repeat on the sales floor. I'll tell you that. You're right. It's recycled, non-woven carbon fiber, um, directionally oriented in a plastic polymer. So, so you want to pop that next slide? We definitely will. I'm gonna, uh, I have some comments, but keep going. Keep, let's finish yeah. this part first. Yeah. So that's kind of a, on the slides you'll notice, like it's a really up kind of up close view of the carbon fiber. And they found... Believe it or not, by having the recycled fibers all running the exact same direction, so it's non-woven, like it's not typical carbon fiber like you'd see when it's, you know, a two-by-two two spread toe pattern. Uh, this The grain of this carbon fiber is all running the exact same direction, much like threads or, you know, what you could also think of as like wood grain, mm -hmm. right? Think about the strength in a tree and the, the way the, the grain of the wood goes, right? Um, that has increased the strength of the cone significantly. Um, and because it's carbon fiber, which is typically a very strong and a very light material, I mean, that's why we use it um, in chassis design, in F1, in air, you know, aeronautics, everywhere, uh, because it's extremely strong, extremely light. Um, that combined with kind of the directionality of it and the properties or the absorption of carbon fiber itself really did make it uh, an ideal candidate for what we were looking at in the speaker. Question. Answer. Where are they finding re this quantity of recycled carbon fiber? I'm just, it's hard enough to find carbon fiber. These guys are going after recycled. I mean, help me understand this, Justin. Uh, Nicholas Latifi's F1 car. Fair enough. That's probably good for what? At least a thousand speakers right there. <laughs> um, I, actually, I actually don't know where they're getting the carbon fiber from, but... Uh, and the reason I bring that up is because the story behind flax, right? See, I pay attention. The whole story behind flax is because it was a resource that was readily available, renewable, so on and so forth. So I have yeah. to imagine there's a story behind this recycle. I mean, I've never even heard of anything using recycled. I'm going to go back a slide here. Recycled, non-woven carbon fiber. I mean, that is a very specific type of material. So very yeah, I mean, a huge emphasis on the recycling. I mean... The amount of carbon fiber used in probably manufacturing processes or, I mean, scraps or just, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, carbon fiber is a fabric, much like fiberglass that comes on a roll and there's waste. So uh, I think the fact, to be honest, I think it probably attributes to how it falls in the price point that it's at. You know what I mean? Being the fact that they have the ability or technology to use previously used or, you know, recycle what some consider scraps probably does affect the, the, the bottom end or the lower price point of the speaker, uh, but it gives them the exact uh, qualifications or parameters that the speaker needs. And it gives this like badass kind of unique okay. granite. Okay. I, was, I, was, I wasn't even ready for you to show the speaker yet, but if you want to go there, let's go ahead and zoom in on Justin, because this is a big move. I mean, polyglass is a staple or has been a staple within the full cal lineup. So for them to move, uh, and did I hear this? Is this replacing polyglass? So, Ben, uh, yes, effectively it is. So this will be or, or is on its way to being the official replacement for the polyglass series. So as of right now, we will be just kind of using the six and a half coax and component slave fiber as mm -hmm. A replacement for the PS and the PC 165s. Mm -hmm. uh, the four inch and the five and a quarter polyglass will continue um, until they design that. So Fair that's the exciting, that's probably the most exciting part of this for me, Ben, is that you are now getting, if you just bring me back up on screen here, 
Yeah. I just please. wanted to just take a quick little look here at the speaker and notice the branding on the top. This is made in France. So this is a made in France speaker at the polyglass price point. Wait, hold on. Polyglass was not made in France? So polyglass was, but in 2016, it, it was, or sorry, 2013, it was shifted to China. Oh, so now they're bringing it back to France. Yes. So it's, it's super exciting for us. I mean, the speaker in general has like a, uh, like a kind of really pretty blue hue to it. Everything from the front of the speaker, the cone, the, the basket, even to the, the way that the basket is designed, it's still same thing. It's I really wish you had that. I really wish you had a flax next to you. Yeah. Just because I wanted to come, I would have loved to compare that too. Cause I mean, it's getting close to flaxy vibes. So it's uh, it's it's very very close actually to flaxy. So when you think of the price point that it's at, um, it's exciting. So for all of our dealers that currently have a display board, I mean, if you have one of our older style, uh, you know, four place boards, uh, you now can put, you know, five hundred and up, five hundred dollars and up on that board, all made in France product, um, and it's going to be like, I mean, not you know, our colors all kind of symbolize something due to the materials that they use but at the end of the day let's call it pretty cool when there's like a navy blue there is pretty cool brown, yellow pretty and gray you know yeah here at cma and, we kind of like identifying things with color so i totally know what you mean yes right showcase connected <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly exactly and exactly. and the thing that's exciting about it honestly is our colors aren't just colors they're all part of the sales tool and this like every one of that level of speaker has a story behind it or a reason why it looks like that not because hey well we know that you know focal speakers are yellow and they've been around since 1986 so let's just do a yellow speaker because people know the yellow right so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, well, it's not about that it's it's all purpose built which is really unique and these are the characteristics or the results of that engineering Let's go ahead and put this next slide up. I want Justin to talk through it, talk us through this a little bit. So let me understand this right. Polyglass was made in France, then it went offshore. Now we're bringing it's being replaced slowly by this new line, which is slate fiber, which is made in France. So which, is there is there a price hike between the last polyglass to this new slate fiber as far as percentage? So as far as pricing goes, I mean, it is slightly a bit more than polyglass, but it's not really any more than polyglass because we haven't done a price increase on polyglass. Uh, right. So, I mean, our industry over the last two years has been hit with significant amount of price increase. Mm -hmm. We've tried to hold ourselves as, you know, do as little as possible. But, you know, if poly polyglass was to continue, these would virtually be the exact same price. Now, would you say that this is a higher performer than inside? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay. So inside's a unique line. Uh, inside or the integration line is a really good value for dollar, um, being that it uses a, a, a version of the polyglass cone. In the inside, it's a black cone. In the integration, it's gray. Um, and it also features uh, a version of a kind of a tamed down original flax tweeter, the aluminum magnesium, which is, you know how you said this is very kind of flaxy well it is flaxy yeah so the new slate fiber actually uses a, a tweeter so this is the new tweeter um which is very very similar to the original hold that up. aluminum magnesium tweeter so you but can see it's got that blue hue to mm -hmm. it as well i'm trying to get the light on it <laughs> well we see the blue hue uh, but what material is this uh so this is an aluminum magnesium tweeter with a 25 millimeter, it's a 25 millimeter tweeter. It's 12 millimeters high. All right. So it's super tiny. It, it kind of comes with a little case that you can put in there and mm -hmm. clip it. And there you go. And there's now, different options. this tweeter is very, very similar to the original flax tweeter, which is great because when I talk about flax, the thing with flax for me is when you look at K2 and its dynamic attributes and you look at Utopia M and it's, you know, ultra smooth, honest sound. Well, a flax mid-bass driver is much more like a Utopia style cone in terms of dampening than compared to a K2. 
But the tweeter, the aluminum magnesium, is a very detailed, accurate tweeter that is kind of tends to roll off more towards the Kevlar style of tweeter um, than the Utopia. So Flax ultimately is this like amazing combination of both of those speakers. And that's kind of what Flax has done so well with in the past. So to have, you know, kind of the originator of that be paired with the new slate fiber is super exciting. Um, the other thing is they also come with grills. I mean, even our Auditor Evil series still comes with grills. So our price point series comes with grills. They're not extra. You know, you know what's interesting? It's actually less quote unquote branded than the Auditor series. And the yeah. sense that there's no big wave guy. You know what I mean? It's just a discreet yeah. little full cow logo in the corner. I mean, obviously, if, if you're in an install where you can see the surround and the trim, then obviously, you know, the France flag is there. For sure. Most of the time, there's, that's hidden most of the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty discreet, pretty classy. Um, but the, that hue, if, it'd be cool if you had that situation where you can actually peer through and see that hue. I think it's kind of yeah. like the motorcycle, in, you know, the, the, yeah, yeah, you know, you sure. see the yellow. Yeah. It's just cool. Anyhow. Totally. And, and, and uh, I mean, that's that's one thing as our signature is our signature sound and our signature colors, which is exciting. So the this is available in a coax as well as a component yeah. set. So here's component driver. And just for people to get a taste, there's the coax. Uh, so, there it is. Right. So same style tweeter right on the front. You can see kind of that's that aluminum magnesium, the blue hue, the same style baskets. Um, virtually one has a face plug and one doesn't. Um, the other thing that's unique about uh, the, the slate fiber, it's the same thing that goes back to polyglass. So if anyone has have ex had experience recently with the polyglass, this is the crossover for the polyglass. So Ben, can you see that? Maybe zoom in for me. Yeah, so the absolutely. thing that I want to show you is this, this crossover is actually designed to be split. I was so, wondering why they look like two pieces. Because they are. Right? So they each have a little locking me mechanism on the side should you want to mount it together like a standard crossover. Or they go together. Now the reason they did this is just sheer installability. Uh, you know, there's trucks, for example, that have speakers in the door and tweeters in the dash, right? Or something like that. And this kind of gives you that ability using the same signal run of wires. Uh, if it's not a fully active, you know what I mean? If it's just a cap or split somewhere else, you know, you're now not running wires to and from to tag the crossover, nor are you just sticking the crossovers at the back of the, at the back of the car by the amp, which is also fine too, provided that you want to run the extra wires. So we give you a 12 dB per octave slope on the high pass for the tweeters. And then we give you a um, 6 dB per octave slope on the low pass for the woofers. What kind so, of, uh, do you have the specs on that? What, are, what kind of power handling are we talking about for the, for the series? Um, they are, I believe 125 watts max or around 80 RMS each. Mm -hmm. I believe I, I don't remember them exactly right now. So would you say, and I'm sorry to put you on the, on the spot like that. I was just no curious. Worries, the, re fine. the reason I was asking that question is, is this at that point teetering between it should still sound good on, you know, head unit power, or is this like definitely, put this is power? amplifier. So this is amplifier. okay. This is amplifier. So when, Generally, with the Made in France product, like I said, these are in the five to five fifty retail ranges. Canadian, yep. Yeah. Um, generally, in this range, you should be amplifying because this, you know, most head units are actually, you know, between sixteen to twenty RMS total yeah. um, at clean signal, and at, at this type of dollar value, you're not going to be giving justice to the speaker. Uh, without adding that external amplification. These, when it comes to made in France, when it comes to polyglass, um, really for us at the access level of speaker is where we begin to uh, demand amplification. But the for just for clarity, the auditor, awesome off head unit power. Audit, auditor, Focal inside, Focal integration. Um, you can run those no af aftermarket amplifier, uh, all day long, premium audio system, bass audio system, head unit, iPod, whatever you need, those mm -hmm. will do great. 
Um, and, it, and it makes sense. If you're going to spend this kind of money for a set of speakers, yeah, you give it the power it deserves, right? That's, yeah. That's what it's I mean, about. at the end of the day, right, we would, like I said, we would much rather, you know, under promise and over deliver than, you know, the, and, and the problem is for us is we know what our speakers sound like. Okay. We know what they're supposed to do. Right. But if you go somewhere and you go to a shop that's not fully capable or the salesman hasn't maybe done their diligence and, and sold the appropriate gear or the amplifier. Well, nobody thinks, man, shop a ABC sucks. My, my, I spent $600 and it doesn't sound good. It's because the sales guy didn't know what he's doing or it's the installer. Mm. They think I bought this brand speakers. I bought Focal speakers. They were like $600 and they suck. <laughs> right. That's, that's the name that kind of becomes, uh, synonymous with the quality or the performance right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um it's great to have that backing with with the company and the brand but uh but with us you need to make sure that you under and and it's very obvious most of the dealers that do our product know the product very well and they yeah. know right well, where maybe it's... because they've got some good training from a really good trainer oh just saying yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, um, let's go ahead and take down this image here. I want to dive a little bit deeper here with Justin in our final moments. Um, so I'm going to ask you. You've had the chance to the slave. I'm sorry. We're focusing on slave fiber because I'm going to be honest. This is like really exciting. So yeah. I'm sorry if I keep asking about slave fiber, but have no, you please. had a chance to listen, audition slave fiber? Yeah, actually. So I got to hear them twice. I got to hear them once in October, um, uh, just with like an. Uh, I can't remember what the amplifier was, but they were in a Mercedes. Uh, just in, I was actually in France visiting the the factory, watching them be made, which is really cool. Super. Brilliant. And uh, it uh, they they they're very smooth sounding speakers. If I have to define it, I I define it as just kind of like highly accurate, very relaxed sounding speaker, right? So it's great dynamic range, not overly punchy or in your face, but just very smooth and honest, very pleasing. Then when I got down to the Master Tech Expo in March, March, March. Yep, yeah, March. Yep. Uh, I got to hear a full slave fiber system with not obviously not slave fiber woofers. I believe it had flax woofers. Uh, but this one was done with an amp and a DSP. And it was it totally livened the difference of the speakers. Right. It was it was almost a whole different atmosphere. So the versatility of these speakers is phenomenal. And what you get at that price point is excited. That's exciting. I mean, that's why the Core Series home speaker, um, it, you know, available with Atmos or whatever is such a good selling speaker because Cor it's all. Cor so sorry, sorry, sorry. Did you say Chorus? Cora. Cora. Now, Cora. if I'm not mistaken, Cora, is that their um, midline of bookshelf and standing? Uh, yeah, I, I would, high? yeah, I would say it's like the equivalent. It's like the entry to French product. Ones, right. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. That matches it's, exactly the same type of. Yeah, exactly. The it's the audio. same hierarchy, you know, the same mm -hmm. thing in, in home it's, you know, slate fiber and then flax and then Kate, mm -hmm. you know, they have one pair of REA K2s, which is actually new ish. Uh, and then obviously gets into the Electra Utopia. Blah. So my last question on the sound. How would you compare them to Flax? So I would compare them very similar to old Flax. So when Flax Evo was redone uh, with that new, uh, the TAM tweeter, that new pro M profile kind of bronzy copper tweeter, um, that tweeter is absolutely unbelievable, right? Like it's, it's the the directionality of that tweeter, like the ability. Like there's only one tweeter better than that tweeter, which is the Utopia tweeter. Well, yeah, Kevlar, yeah, whatever. Kevlar, okay. Tam, Kevlar, Utopia. Okay. But uh, so this this sound signature is is very stable and very, very close to Flax. It, the which one's more efficient? Uh, the, the Flax is actually a little bit more efficient than these. The things. Flax is more efficient than the Slate Fiber. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And which one would you say play deeper? Um, you know, I haven't probably listened to them enough to give you an honest answer for that. But I mean, if anyone knows Flax, Flax mid bass is hella tight, right? Yes. It's, that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, like, please make no mistake. Flax is a step up from this. Okay. 
right? This is not equivalent to flax, mm -hmm. but this is getting you one step closer in the allotted dollar value. I guess what I'm after from a deal, I'm just trying to represent the dealers yeah. on this is, you know, am I doing myself a favor by demoing this next to flax? Do oh, I? Oh yeah, it's noticeable. It is noticeable. Okay, so yeah. if it is noticeable, right. then... but what you but when we demo, you you always take away, right? You right, take away. Right, so you All would right. play flax first, mm -hmm. um, and you would know your demo material, and then you would play this, and you would be able to articulate and describe to your customer what they're missing, what their ears are no longer hearing, whether it's a hi-hat, whether it's a snare drum, you know what I mean, whether it's an oboe and a clarinet playing at the same time, um, you know, that comes on to you. But the ability for the speaker to convey the music or, or you know, the accuracy of what it's supposed to be playing, that's where the differences begin to show, right? It's uh, We all know that a, a display board is not representative of how no. a speaker is going to sound in the car. And that's not what we dis we design our demos or our boards to be. Our boards are are designed one hundred percent. They're not so much the the here come here listen to how good this sounds. Right? We do have a display board for that. We do have Utopia M boards that effectively go in something like a listening room, right? Just like you would in high end home audio. Please mm -hmm. here have a seat, enjoy. Um, but when we have a multi speaker demo board or demo system. That is to 100% to show the difference in the audible information that is being conveyed to as you. As you step down. As you step down, right? Gotcha. So, you know, you play one sound starting here or song and halfway you switch to the sound to where maybe that customer wanted to be. And there's a huge difference and, and it's a noticeable difference. And it's noticeable enough that the customer says, yeah. Yeah, I, have, I don't want to lose that. I, I'll stay I, right here. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's that you know you didn't didn't know what you had till it's gone, right? Don't know what well, you got. Well, that's to. The, the magic recipe right there to, to make some big high end sales. Um, information on the bottom right here. If you're interested in Focal and you're happen to be in Canada, bbdistribution.ca exclusive distributor for Focal Car Audio in Canada. Make sure you get a hold of him, and then and then of course you become a dealer. Then you get this gentleman to help train you and your staff on how to best sell it. Just a quick recap, Justin. We covered the the uh, the, the twin sub. We cover the yeah. sub twin. We cover the new auditor or revamped auditor line, which is now part of the Focal family. Great cosmetics, great value, entry into the Focal DNA. Two uh, slim speakers. With the two slim profile, uh, six and a half and five and a quarter? Yes, sir. Both? Uh, no, both six and a half. Both six and a half in the component and the coaxial. And coax, yeah. And then, of course, what we've been talking about of the bulk of this conversation is, of course, the new technology, the new cone material, slate fiber. Right now, only two SKUs, but slowly transitioning to a full line. Did I get that yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, uh, we just got word from France that we're anticipating our our shipment and arrival of the product within the next couple of weeks. So it's going to be exciting. Get your orders in, folks. Get your orders in. <laughs> Sir, it's been a blast. Thank you so much for coming in today, Justin. Take care, Ben. Have a great day. See you, you next too. time. Take care. That was Justin Bond, the product trainer for BB Distribution, as well as Full Cal Canada for Car Audio. Um, BB Distribution, hit them up. Brand new slate fiber, guys. Get in on that. That's going to be hot stuff. All right. Want to remind you to continue tuning in to CMA Networks. We are continuing on on the car audio theme. Um, this is going to be continuing right through to June. You definitely don't want to miss that. And, of course, we also want to remind you to... Well, there it is, May 27th, goes right through. And then we also have our brand new website. If you haven't checked it out yet, cmanetworks.com. We've totally redesigned the whole thing, kind of like Focal just did with the Slate Fiber. Uh, you can search for all your favorite videos, either through category, uh, by brand, or even by your favorite trainer. Check out my man, Justin Bond. He has his own profile on there for you to see all the videos that we've produced together. And there is a lot of them. Um, that's it. Thanks for tuning in to this CMA Showcase presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect.
I mean, yeah. Let's talk about Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's last What? <laughs> Kevin. You could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What? <laughs>